where Dignitas took the win over Immortals in our fourth game of the day. Their minions almost didn't want to end that game. Yep. <laughs> But Dignitas was able to push it through there right at the end. So here's what I'll say. Okay. I greatly appreciate the minions not ending the game. You don't get to just take a layup. You know, like, <laughs> you got aced. I want you to go out there and make one more play to win the game. You, okay. you can't win getting aced. That is not cool to me. So I fully appreciate the minions going, you know what? You don't we're, deserve we're this We're not going to carry you, yeah. Dignitas. <laughs> we're not going to end the game for you. Two HP. Wow. That's, ho that's wild. I love that. The so lowest health nexus I've ever seen. Yes. Uh, well, there might zero. be a one HP out there. Well, but without <laughs> exploding. Thanks, Mark. I'm sorry, dude. I love you, man. I'm so glad, glad that you're here that. with me today. Get it together. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. It's a crazy, crazy low HP nexus. All that said, though, it didn't change the outcome of the game. And so I do want to talk about what went well for Dignitas. And uh, Emily, uh, of course, the Jarvan left up was not jumped at by River, which is something to be spoken of. But that Caitlyn Lux duo was broken up. You know what? is stronger than Jarvan in the current meta <laughs> is Volibear. Oh my uh, God. <laughs> uh, which, is, which does not the exact same thing, obviously, but like it's still really early ganking focused. And we saw that pretty much immediately from uh, their bot lane. He ganked level three, got them ahead. They were actually able to keep IMT off of an entire wave there and get, I believe, two turret plates yeah. off of it. It got a little silly after that, a little back and forth for, for a while. But, you know, Dig, again, they know their win condition, which is playing through the strength of this bot lane. Hey, IMT had a response. <laughs> it was just the worst executed dive I've seen <laughs> for a long time. It's rough it was, when you see that because uh, yeah. 4v2 should work, <laughs> didn't. And then from that point forward, IMT just played through their bot lane to win this one. So, crazy. Now, uh, the game we just witnessed, as Here well as is. the one we're about to see, Mark, sports teams that are all within that middle six pack. So, ignoring TL and Cloud9 at the top and ignoring our bottom two teams as well. Uh, we did some work over the week to kind of look at the trajectories of these teams, trying to establish some trends about where they're going. I gotta say, it was surprising this week when I started requesting this graphic. I thought there'd be a lot more of those teams trending up that continued. Uh, you know, Golden Guardians kind of turned around a little bit. Immortals didn't sustain that bump. Uh, I think it's really interesting to track this progress because they're all in the hunt for the playoff race. There's four spots left for these six teams. Flying a more, uh, Hunter Thieves feel pretty guaranteed. EG making a move up there. Golden Guardians trying to hold them at bay. Dignitas actually looking a lot better after I think people started losing faith. You saw they had this big U shape. <laughs> yeah. there, was two, there was two yellows there, so it might have been a little hard. There's the gold one, then there's the yellow one. The yellow actually had that dip where it's like, actually, they're, they're coming back around. Right, gold comes next. Yes, yeah, they're, they're, they're up next. <laughs> there we go. And a team that's just kind of now throwing themselves into the conversation is CLG as well. Like the, the fact that they're on kind of a uh, spree and are taking down teams that for sure, like for instance, FlyQuest just yesterday, like they're taking down teams surprisingly. It's going to be a, a good game to watch. All right, well, let's refocus towards that final game of the day. Some of CLG's staff, they sat down with us to share their goals and philosophies for the 2022 season. Let's take a look. So my goals at Golden Guardians was mostly to kind of just be the person leading the charge on the, the development side of things. So mostly Academy, um, we attempted some exploration into the amateur side of things, but ultimately nothing, you know, we never really got there. But ultimately my, my goal of everything was to try and build players that are LCS ready, whether that's, you know, next split, the split after, or years in the future. The goal on Golden Guardians Academy was still mostly developmental, just make sure that it doesn't matter where you start, it just matters where you end. And day by day, you just have to get better and better. And for CLG right now, based on the players that we were able to acquire in the offseason, there's a there's a high ceiling, but there's a long way to go. So the developmental goal we're setting at CLG is mostly one that's truly long-term. We're not looking to get immediate results in the short term. Like, we obviously want to come here and win every weekend if we can, but, you know, that's not the expectation for us. We want to make sure our players are improving throughout the entire process and that they're actually making strides towards the goals that we've set for them internally. So if a player comes in and, and is making strides, even if we lose the game, like, we can still see that as a small success, even though, obviously, it's going to feel a little rough to, to lose a bunch of games. Joining CLG has been nice. They've pretty much trusted us um, with the process of kind of, like, bringing on a whole new coaching staff, whole new players, and kind of being able to structure things the way that we want it to be structured. And it's it's been great. And the players have been, uh, they've been learning, so it's good. Success for CLG ultimately, especially for Spring Split, is mostly just internal progress. Like, are we making progress on the goals that we set for all of our players? Are our team goals being met? Like, you know, obviously a player can have an individually bad performance, but if we're working cohesively within the structure that we set for the team, then we can see that as, a, as like a step towards success. You should be a CLG fan because we have young talent that we know the sky is the limit. 
Sky's the limit. Uh, I really, truly appreciate the contextualization there mm -hmm. of what CLG is looking to accomplish, what success will look like for them at different stages throughout the year. And I think in so many ways, uh, the commitment that they've had to this roster proves that. We're 12 games in, 4-8 and eight is not a beautiful scoreline to be looking at. And yet, Mark, they continue to invest in these players and their growth. And I think you get to see, even though they weren't included in that graphic, you know, because we didn't want to make it too cluttered, right. they're actually ahead of Immortals right now just because Immortals has one more loss. We'll see what happens in this game. But CLG is outperforming some of these teams that got a lot more investment in their players, both TSM and Immortals. They're ahead of in mm -hmm. the standings right now. And I think that does speak to the growth that you're talking about. And, and similarly, when we talk about the growth and development of this team, Emily, the bot lane is going to be the major focus. Yeah, I mean, this was, so the Kaisa and Tazeri is something we covered previously, but we know that CLG actually are willing to go for some of these interesting bot lane picks because they believe in Luger uh, to be able to execute them. We saw the COG actually previously, which was, you know, in the moment, kind of a confusing pick, but another really interesting response we've seen from the CLG team. And I feel like once they are able to make plays in side lanes, it again is always around that bot lane. And they, they started to come to their strive in week four when they actually took that win versus TSM. Then they took down Evil Geniuses, just yesterday taking down FlyQuest. And you talked about their bot lane. Palifax has actually been a pretty large attribute to that one, playing towards that lane with his twisted face. Yeah, well, and this is why I want to bring Emily back in, because mm -hmm. I know she's a big uh, fan of Palifax, at least the way he's been playing so far this year. And you mentioned a TF pick, which I as well know that Emily's a fan of in I hands of Palifax. I am a Palifax. fan of TF. Um, I think, so the big thing is when Palifax is on these picks where he can affect side lanes, when he can team up with contracts early and make plays, that is a harbinger of CLG success. Because even when they make mistakes, in the mid game, if they are able to get that snowball, they're typically able to close out the game. I just want to come to you on something very small uh -oh. here, Mark, before we get to the game. Uh, CLG uh, looking to take down Golden Guardians here. There's been some concerns about Golden Guardians' ability to close games, but they do build phenomenal leads. And so, uh, it, stylistically, how do these teams match up? Well, I think for CLG, they play very aggressively, they go too hard sometimes. And so, <laughs> Here, Golden Gardens are going to get leads. You don't have to challenge them every single step of the way. Just punish them when they do make those oversteps because both these teams feel like they get a little too hypey. I'm looking for that push and that pull in this fifth and final game. Freaking Kobe, take it away. Thank you very much and welcome back to the show. I'm excited for this game to close out. Should we give them some push and pull? I don't. Yeah. <laughs> here, come over here. You're a good friend of mine. Yikes. I like having you okay, near me. Anyways, okay, anyways, let's get into draft. <laughs> wow, okay, great. That went really, really well. I think it's a really exciting game. Uh, so CLG, yes, at 4 and 8, starting in the same spot that Immortals were. You heard the NLS talk about that one. I actually favor CLG here. I think they're, I personally expect them to wow. be the Guardians. So you look at the last five games these teams played. Mm -hmm. CLG are mm -hmm. three and two, Golden Guardians are one and four. And they mostly played the same teams. They both played TSM, CLG won, Golden Guardians lost. They both played EG, CLG won, Golden Guardians lost. Like, they're, they're taking wins against teams that Golden Guardians were not able to beat, and it feels like CLG are the better team right now. They're developing, and if they win this, right, they are one game behind EG in playoffs with five to play. Let it be known. Freak is one of the faithful. I'm one of the faithful. He has joined the ranks. He believes in CLG. Golden Guardians, my goodness, they have to prove something to themselves about ending out games, though. You know, Analyst has touched on it, but yesterday was just so tragic for this team. They had really good split map options, dive options, over 11,000 gold lead, and we're not able to close it out. Get into this one, though. They have to reset, focus. Eyes on the prize, and guess what? Zeri is a good way mm -hmm. to go with that. Lost and Ole have been, I would say, probably the best part of this team for the majority of spring. So many advantages coming out of bottom side of the map for Golden Guardians, and especially in the early game. So I'm incredibly focused on bottom lane matchup here with Golden Guardians and CLG, since that's also been mirrored by CLG. Their success largely towards the bottom lane, towards that side of the map, and first big Zeri will do that. Should look pretty good. Golden Guardians off to a strong start in the duo lane. No support fans as well. Nautilus tends to look pretty good into, you know, Yumi-like lanes because you can just kind of engage and 2v1 the champion. But uh, so far, CLG have had a very bad time in the laning phase. Poom and Luger are very far down on average gold for every player in this game. Yeah, I credit Core JJ. I dubbed this the Core JJ meta of team mm. first picking Nautilus as their, their support picks. And it is the classic combo, the Nautilus plus the Kai'Sa. 
expecting Luger to again go with the poke Kaisa build. We yeah. saw some, you know, lost actually specifically, perfect example here. He went with the pseudo, you know, AP. He built into yeah. Kraken third instead of going to the um, Ludens. Yep. And then also didn't, you know, really commit to getting off a lot of auto attacks. So it didn't end up working out there for them. Let's get into it though. Do we get the lock-in? That's locked yeah, in. Yeah. It's solid, baby. We get the Renata combo with Zeri. So I don't think this duo is that outstanding only because Zeri stops dealing with attack speed very rapidly mm -hmm. and you don't get faster cues, right? Like at a certain point, you literally, you don't fully waste the stat, but it does go away a bit. However, I do love it with the style of jungle they have in Prize Soccer, who is going in, who is going for damage, and you one for one and reset, you're fine. Yeah, you can also just, yeah, like you're saying, pair this champion with melee carries. Yeah. Works out extremely well. Um, Lee Sin definitely will love to have more options when you're jumping in and out to be able to stay in. Look for those bailout kills to try and to try and get resets for yourself. Lock in of the Ari for Palafox on three here. So I'm assuming maybe they'll ban out like uh, the Vagar and Vex type champions yeah. since they've locked up Ari here. And now they can also protect Palafox with a couple of those bans that are uh, against those champions that are pretty good against the, the range from Ari there and try, try and take advantage. Yeah, I want to see more out of the Ari though. She has a losing, last I checked the stats, this could be out of date. She had a losing record in every top league except LCK, where she was one win more than losses. <laughs> she has not found success as a champion so far in pro play that I have seen. Uh, and we are in 12-5 where Ari has actually been further nerfed. So uh, from what I've seen, it feels a bit head scratching, but uh, we'll see if we can get Palafox out of lane and roam into the sides. And that's the point I was going to bring up. She's actually really good into supports like Renata. You know, very squishy, no mobility on Renata. So a bottom lane roam could definitely prove fruitful for CLG. Guess what? That's how they won yesterday, Freaky. He was on Twisted Fate, yep. roamed down to bottom side multiple times. Pop Eyeballs road, yeah. are always looking at that lane. I think especially so with these two teams. So that's why I like the champ. And they did end up banning out the Vex to protect. See if they followed up with the uh, LeBlanc instead because they don't want a fight over the assassin roaming uh, kind of struggle there, the tug of war between the two. Okay. Fair enough. One more man to go through. Of course, we know Jungle is desynced as well. Diana, Volibear, Hecarim, all the table so far. Could add another one. Sin Zhao is an option. Contracts is most played as Leeson. That one's out. Uh, Viego available at this point in time if it's the comp and you've already got engaged. Instead, no Trindamir. They do not want to let Jenkins get counterpick on the top lane. All right. So it's going to be the blind from CLG. Hoping for jungle blind so you can wow. save your... All right. The Rek'Sai makes an appearance again. I'm still a big fan of this champion. Yes, it is a lot of early game influence. It is really focused on this area. It does not scale super well, but it's actually okay later on if you can just trade your life for a higher priority target's life. If you can trade one for one, yes, you're going to die afterwards, but if you get AD carry for your life, you know, um, then, then you get your team to a very strong place. Plus, it is very good into Lee Sin because you can interrupt Lee Sin's dashes, you can deny the second Q damage as well, and it's incredibly easy to pull off that unburl, just attack, move on the ground. Moving straight forward though, what's gonna be the counter here for Jenkins into Scion, into the tank top side? You know, we saw Aatrox, very effective. The set hover over there is actually pretty decent too, um, but since it is Jenkins, I look for a little bit more I, a variability. Ooh, uh, Kale is actually pretty good in the Scion. Uh, you don't get uh -huh. bullied too hard. You eventually scale out alongside it and get into late game. Camille's good too. Yeah, but you know, the, the Kale also yeah re requires some babysitting. And <laughs> if you're looking a lot bottom side, you know you're revealing jungle ganking there. Then yeah, your Kale can get punished early on, even into that lane. So. Uh, Interesting here that they do put Jenkins on the Camille for that split. There's so much pick potential in this CLG lineup for later on. Very clearly, Golden Guardians want to group. They've got the main front line. They've got the big tank. Um, meanwhile, CLG have a lot more options for split pushing later on. So we'll see if they can do it because uh, Rek'Sai here is a gambit. A lot of early game risks will be taken. See if contracts can convert on them. What if respawning was refreshing?
here's to the round between rounds. This game is rigged. This game is out to get me. <laughs> I always love that I, one. I've, that, I, I haven't seen that one before. I really? The last part got me. I've, I've delivered that line so many times now because mm. it's just in my head. I've seen that ad so many times. I'm like, yeah, this game is rigged. This game is out to get me. It is It is lived on. It's like I'm a gamer from like mm. Double Lift and Co. From IEM back in the day. It's like, those are the two that, that I have heard so many times as ads that that is just, it's invaded my my speech patterns, much like how Pog, you know, Twitch is messing with me as well. Now, now I'm saying Pog and things like that. It's amazing how that all works out. But we are out of the rift, and I got to say, I do like elements of CLG's comp. I want to spend a little bit of time talking about Kai'Sa, um, champion that I love very dearly, near and dear to my heart. I think great champion overall. Um, it's sort of like Yasuo, where like you really want a knockup team to play a Yasuo. If, if you're not setting up a Kai'Sa to have some ult Q plays, why are you picking this champion? Because ideally, champs have strengths and weaknesses. They're ideally balanced. Kai'Sa's not obviously overpowered. Mm -hmm. So if she's not synergistic, why are you playing her? It's like, well, we got Rek'Sai Flash Cycle. We got Ari Charms. We got, you know, Literally Pineal every Vibe. champ on CLG. Yeah, right? Like, <laughs> literally everyone. I mean, it can be hard to land the hook shot on the right target, but, like, oh. you want a delivery for Kai'Sa. And, and even think about the build she goes for, right? Every single player rushes Serrated Dirk to get a Q of all as fast as possible. If she's buying Lethality to Q a Scion, you're trolling, right? So the entire point should be, ah, she got onto the Syndra, ulted behind, landed ISO Q with 10 shots. Like, even the build says, by the way, give me Synergy or why are you picking me? Yeah, it's, it's definitely been the main point for the resurgence of these dive comps that have been so prolific this weekend. Uh, and been all across the LCS CLG with another one here. Definitely worked out for them yesterday. So we'll see if they can continue on this power. Again, the Rek'Sai though, so fun because there are a lot of gank angles that are unavailable to other types of champions. Um, you can go over so many walls as contracts here. So uh, even though it's not gonna happen this game, I'm just gonna point out a lot of the walls that Rek'Sai can go over. Uh, top side, this one is one of my favorites because top laners never expect jungler to come from behind them early on in the game. You can go over the back of the dragon pit, no problem to get behind bottom side as well. If you wanted to go there, same thing, mirrored basically for both sides. So it also goes for the thick wall behind uh, the other half of the map. But those ones really allow you a lot of angles. And then mid lane as well is super easy because you have tunnel into flash. So should be able to close the gap onto something like a Syndra, as right. you're pointing out. Just getting into the brush means, oh, I'm enraged to guarantee exactly. the knockup combo. And unless you preemptively flash, you're CC'd for three seconds and then dead to the, to the Ari following up. So yeah, a lot of cool stuff to see. Obviously a strong early game jungler. Uh, always can be really tough to play a fighter without a great tank ulti. You know, like at least Sin can kick, a Singe out can ult and stay alive. But mm. uh, yeah, Rek'Sai doesn't have that same safety tool where it's like, if she's caught, she's kind of just dying. Oh, good ward. Here we go. Nice attempt to flash charm. Blaze all fast enough to, tr to flash away from it. That's kind of was there for the follow up as it showed up. Obviously, Jenkins looking very good in this one. Grass trades back, but Licorice gonna have a really hard time ever winning this lane. So now you can just do a wraparound gank from contracts come from the other side. As we said, if if uh, you wait for your tunnel cooldown, then you can flash on this Syndra. There's no flash on Syndra. It's oh. basically guaranteed. It's so doomed. Walk at her. You've got a tunnel to take. Oh, there's nowhere to go. Charm's gonna land. Tunnel's right back over. There's the knockup. There's the guarantee. Flash me. Right, that was not necessary. Palafox question marked his own teammate, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's whatever. Contract has guaranteed the kill. The Blaze all is down. First blood CLG. Yeah, you, you can wait. At the very least, you can wait a little bit to see if, like, oh, he's walking out towards minions and, like, Palafox doesn't have enough damage or, yeah. or whatever there. But got to send a message, freak. Yep. Get in the dirt. I don't need You don't this. respect my wraparound <laughs> ganks, kid. Yep. Well, <laughs> down goes Ablalov. Though he has very good damage stats, has been picked on here. Well played to the squad. Ari plus Rek'Sai, certainly high pressure. Now it is three camps versus seven. Now I take the first blood over four camps most times, but Price yeah. Parker is off to a good start as far as farm is concerned. Yeah. Also, you know, Syndra constantly has to focus on regaining vision around this mid lane. That's why you see, uh, at least in here, Pride Soccer goes, gets both Scuttle Crabs and spends a bunch of his extra time here. Double wards. They put wards on both sides. See the one up here by Raptors. He put one down here. He gets the double scuttle crabs as well. Yep. Okay, we're lighting this sucker up like a bright light. Make sure we see anything coming your way, Ablaze. I want to point out a very minor thing as well. Uh, theoretically, actually, never mind. Uh, Pride Soccer was on the top side of the map, so never mind. He always has to reset to get back to that one. But he could have, after scuttle, run to the bot side and gone for Gromp. That would have been wrong. You had 900 gold to spend. If your first clear is done and you got a bunch of camps, even if you're laying your clear by five seconds, 
have money in your inventory so that you can fight next time around. So, uh, obviously, correct choice by Pride Stalker, but I've seen a lot of junglers sit there with 2,000 gold inventories. That is incorrect. Please spend between your clears. Yeah. And, of course, it is the correct buy going for the pickaxe because that builds into your whip, which is your number one most important early game item. Jenkins, meanwhile, on the top side doing decently. Uh, no problem up here against Licorice. Both of them with the grass trying to uh, charge up for the health for later on in the game, but early Sheen purchase for him too. Maybe he can get some roams off. Camille roams early on in the game are very important uh, and can be very influential when you've got a mid laner constantly struggling to keep up their flash cooldown and, and uh, struggling for their lives. So Syndra not only has to worry about Rek'Sai, Ari combinations, but Camille is also a very good, you know, push and roam style champion. It's, it's a lot harder to get the push uh, is the key part in the early game before you have a uh, Tiamat of your own to get your own wave clear, but mm -hmm. that is a big angle for Jenkins to look for too to try and influence the rest of the map. Founder tries to find the Raptor if they're already down as Pride Stalker finishes his second clear, no problem. Once again, another full clear on the Lee, but 3v1. Where's the Syndra? There she is. Tunnel over the back of the Raptors is also highly effective, yep. especially more since your level, uh, once you get your level six though, because Rex, I can start off the tower dive and then use ultimate to drop tower aggro. It's a little dangerous early on to go for those tower dives with no ultimate and no flash. Kind of, I believe, spotted that they walked up to that tri brush, says, hey, you know, bet you they warded that one. And saying outside of range of both of those sets of wards, so Poon's going to clear it. And this is a bait. Ah, uh, okay, they're going to bring Conduct over. Says, never mind. We're not going to go for anything. So maybe they would try to contest me. Yeah. I'm not going to come through. Of course, Ari had first move on mid as well. So uh, even that one is going to be now on a trinket ward. So, all right, fair enough. Golden Guardian's playing it correctly, safely. Sealed you right now, only up 340 despite a 600 gold for the kill and assist. A little bit better farming the Golden Guardian side, but a close game overall. Yeah. Easy grab two, four contracts because they have so much extra vision around this bottom side. So they'll see Pride Soccer sneak in, clear out their ward. He's got the safety to get level six off of Crab plus Gromp, too. Uh, if he can get level six advantage over Pride Soccer, over Lee Sin at this point in the game, that is huge. Rek'Sai will demolish Lee Sin. Ah, doesn't quite have enough experience off of the Gromp, so needs to get back to top side first to get that level six. He's a piece of red. Wolves and Raptors are both down right now. Krugs are up if needed. And the mid laners are going back and forth, clearing the waves. Despite the first blood of Blaze all was able to TP back and keep up in farm. Seems Pride Soccer will not be invading this red buff, instead taking his blue on the third clear. Mm -hmm. Drop is back up for a pretty efficient one at that, so Pride Soccer is going to be pretty much efficiently taking every camp possible. Only thing he's lost is that one bottom scuttle on the second spot. Okay, there we go. Level six acquired, four contracts. They can put a lot of pressure either towards the Syndra first and then look bottom, or if bottom lane burns summoner spells Good themselves. Damage. Poom can't land anything, just getting burned down. Finally flashes. Exhaust on Luger is just cleansed away, has lost his low. Wait. Luger could ult and chase, uh, doesn't even need to. Lost? Just walks him down over aggression. I don't know if Ole's W was down, if he was burning, but just nothing happened there. I think he used it for the aggression, I assume. There was definitely some miscommunication there. Now they're looking for the dive. Poom moves up. Level four, pretty easy kill right now. There's the ult four for the shield. It is going to be a trade of his life, but worth it. All of that gold next speed goes to waste. Wow, that, yeah, that was definitely miscommunication on the side of Golden Guardians. The bottom lane that has been so good for them gets demolished by the seal. G1, Palafox moves in. Pride Soccer smites away, though, and will at least get his Raptors while Contracts takes away his red. When you have two teams, Freak, where we focus in the intro for them, both on bottom lanes, both on the bottom lanes being the successes of these two squads, it is a huge advantage for CLG, having Luger come out ahead on the bottom half, him getting both of the kills as well. So even though it starts out with boom into the wall and you're like, oh my God, what's going on here? He's going down, he flashes and it looks bad, but then it turns right around. Luger gets two kills. Contracts has the advantage in jungle and as well. He is dead. Charm and the revive will mean nothing. Can't even follow the Q. Scion shows up, choo choo. Okay. Flash out from Kondrak, but out of everyone goes. Yeah, I think it was a good flash because if you get hit by that, then you are instantly stunned by Syndra as well, follow up, and you die. So good flash there by Contracts. Uh, also good preparation. Similar thing to yesterday. CLG have clearly put in a lot of effort into vision control, into brush plays with Contracts and Poom waiting in the brush ahead of time. And it has actually paid out in both days. There was one counterattack yesterday that actually went against them, but other than that, they actually have gotten so many advantages from Poom roaming up with contracts into 
thwarted brushes that they know they have control wards in and have swept their way up to, and then getting these surprise picks on their opponents. Another advantage earned here. It's just, just a much more cohesive CLG than we've seen in the past because yeah. a lot of their losses came from, you know, disorganized play, clearly not on the same page with them, you know, mistakes coming from either side, but this CLG looks way, way better. What a weekend so far. If they can actually take this one all the way to the bank too, a, a mm -hmm. duo weekend would be crazy uh, successful for them. And it's cool to watch because, I mean, think about how it started, right? It was a really, really bad look in lock-in. It was a, it was a, I mean, they didn't have a whole roster for sure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and a really bad luck with getting a spring, but it's like, look, you know, the coaching staff, everyone, they believe in these players. They believe in the growth. So like, there's no roster swaps. It's the same five dudes the whole time and better and better and better and improve and improve and improve. And well, it turns out that sticking with it has worked out in this case. The CLG are, you know, this trajectory means they are tying for seventh and, and they're one game behind playoffs. And you can clearly see the work that they put in. It's cool that there's a very clear focus. They're like, you know what? This weekend, we're going to have a lot of bottom lane focus. We're going to unlock Poom to roam with contracts and we're going to get these picks into uh, roam plays for later on. So we'll see if they can actually pull it off, though, because again, uh, just very early on in the game, and there is a Rift Herald. This is first Rift Herald, so that one could pay out. There's plenty of time for Golden Guardians to try and swing this back in their favor. Everybody roaming up except the AD carries, even four on four. Alrighty, this should be a pretty fun one right now. Two doesn't help left on the Herald. A flash stun gonna come through. Here comes the backline access. Kicked right back out. A good stun from Nautilus hits two. That is Rek'Sai claiming contrast gets the Herald. A charm across the squad. The go Berserk, good damage, a stun across as well. Rek'Sai comes through, knocking down Lee Sin. Down goes Pride Stalker. CLG find their fifth kill. And, oh, not quite number six. Palafox not in range. Contracts. Q, Con Q, I mean, Q, 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 I don't think there's a way out. There's, there's, there can't be a way out, right? I mean, at this point, you shove in the wave. A Blaze, <laughs> a Blaze Olive cannot live. Ah, I love it. Smite the minion, baby. Yeah, I love it, Love too. it, Contracts. Give him the false sense of security, hiding behind the minion. Then he just burrow Q snipe. <laughs> Nice, love it. CLG, this is this is a new CLG era here, Freak, and they are taking over. Luger taking care of yep. his own business in bottom side two. 1v1ing Zeres with the Kaisa. He's uh, had, had a couple of those. Yeah, ult for ult plus double summoners. Mm -hmm. I think this Luger like landed a W, ult on is like, hail of blades, baby, let's go. That's all five stacks. And that was lost to have to burn everything to live. And I want to point out, I don't know if we're going to get the replay or not, but as we mentioned going into it, we're like, okay, so it's even four on four, but no, not all four on fours are created even because one of the Golden Guardians members, Ole, was on the other side of the team. And he actually went back towards mid lane. So I don't know what Golden Guardians were expecting. They stay on this Rift Herald. Ole's walking the other way. He was walking away on Renata. So he arrives very late. And by that time, CLG have already made the call, hey, this guy is split. Just bully them off the Rift Trail. We can get it. We can get the kills as well. Uh, you know, credit to Jenkins for jumping in head first there on the Camille starting it out. But it was a split Golden Guardians. Uh, Renata on the other side and CLG make them pay. Smite the minion. Get your Q through. Uh, Blitzcrank uh, <laughs> style plays. Yeah, it was fun. Skill shot to the minion, smite it before it lands, and off you go. Kill number four for the Prowler's Claw on Rek'Sai. An early game champion, to be sure. So far, though, it's working great and has to keep that one going. As the stun comes back, Lickers, I mean, holding on, sir, against this Camille. He's not, you know, dying anytime soon. Camille, again, still favored in that battle. And the team is winning. Guess what? Poom and Contracts working together again, Freak. You get Poom a roam timer off bottom lane. He goes with Contracts into the jungle. They keep on counter jungling. And it is it is quite ni nice to see Contracts having some more success here on this squad. Early on, people were looking for him as basically the most experienced member of CLG to kind of lead the way. Mm -hmm. uh, and now he's definitely doing that, kind of holding hands with Boom, all of these early plays with the Rek'Sai, side, taking advantage of the champion kit. Now you've got access to more creative plays since you have Prowler's Claw. Uh, staying burrowed and using the Prowler's Claw active is the whole reason, you know, for the, the key basically to the success um, of this champion item combination and why they're so inseparable. You can stay unburrowed while you use it, and so you get a, basically a guaranteed knock up there. And he's richest person in the game, which is often the case with successful Rek'Sai games where you're cool. getting a lot of last hits. Handshake cleanses down, so they're going to be attacked there. Flash the way to get away from Pyro. The Fox are going to jump right back Toast. in, lands the ult QQ, gets the kill, and here comes the teleports for a little bit more. Boom. Trying to run away, but here's Palafox lands. 
The freeze, they're gonna get one back. Jenkins now on the board, seven to two. But there's objective bounties in the game already, Freak. 14 minutes is basically as early as they turn on. If they turn on earlier than that, there has to have been, you know, some catastrophe. Like, person wasn't yeah. even on the team or whatever. And so, this is some of the most stompy early stage that we have seen, and it's gonna get punished here. Golden Gardens, if Licorice can bang through this entire tower, the objective bounties just got turned on. You can slingshot right back into it. And this is one of the reasons why people have shied away from, from some of the really early game oriented champions is that you are very likely to create objective bounties for your opponents early on in the game. And sure. then you may not scale as well later on. If you give up some of those bounties, there is a, a bit more danger. Yeah, of course, right? If you screw up and they get to, you know, solo a lane for three minutes, it's like, all right, well, what did your three kill Camille do? Uh, I missed, missed a stun. Okay, well, right. And as I mean, it's just, just to talk about it, right? Overall, yeah, like, yeah, 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 right? It's like, well, I had to kill your tower or steal the dragon to get a bounty. Well, how'd they do that? Probably a mistake from the winning team. So, you know, I'm, I'm personally a fan of the bounties. Obviously, like, tuning can always be subject to, to discussion, and, and, you know, you don't want it ever to be too big. But I do like kind of where it lands up. It's like, well, yeah, you had to go do, like, a real thing. Yeah, that's definitely a debate that we would need more oh, time yeah. on because oh, yeah. uh, more interesting. So we'll just keep on this one here as Pal Fox rotates to switch with Luger. He's got no summoner spells on the Kai'Sa, so they actually rotate him mid lane, much safer for him. Rek'Sai, oh. ultimate in. Ult combo, there's Kai'Sa, and that's what you want to see. A great trade back to be sure, but just press the button, set up for the Kai'Sa, get the execute. Mid lane turret falls afterwards, CLG grow the lead. Yeah, the one ray of hope for Golden Guardians, of course, is the shutdown money, the bounty going onto the Syndra. Ablaze Olive has stopwatch Ludens combination here for Syndra, but there's no tower to safely mount your defense from mid lane for the Golden Guardian. So definitely a successful force there by CLG. Mm -hmm. um, getting that tower down this early opens up the possibilities of stealing away so much more jungle resources. So that kind of, it's kind of an investment in a way to pry open a bigger advantage. And there it is. So hit your Q, just go in with the ultimate and then Nice job, though, as he's dying, Ablaze gets his ulti off, gets his Scatter of the Week off as well, and it's just enough to get himself a bounty in payment. Yeah, 700 gold. Considering normally his kill is uh, 450 total, that is uh, definitely a big price. But Licorice shoving for this turret. Would love to get it. First turret is down, but, I mean, even if you die for it, it's worth every single time. So take the final tower. There you go. Bounty claim now to 1v2. Does not have a way of winning. Holds for some CC and actually builds some space, so they got to get some cooldowns across. Are you kidding? Licorice currently going to live. They need another hook shot. They need it soon. There comes Jenkins. Going to find at least a bit of damage here. A flash, and Licorice actually gets out. You got to be kidding me. Well played. Well, Kaisa hit a W. I was like, okay, Rek'Sai had a couple seconds left on the ultimate. Maybe they thought that they had Rek'Sai ultimate available to be able to finish off later, but they kind of walk away from it. And that means it is going to be top lane pushed in, but Golden Guardians, they've got teleport coming up on Licorice. I believe it is now available, and there he goes. He uses it to get on in. This could be the fight. Five on five, he's able to spend the money he got from that turret bounty. So another item on the board gets hooked in, very tanky, but it's going to be a lot of damage still. The Berserk gets two, one auto attack. Contracts exhausted, attacked. Ults for a second will still die. Golden Guardians win the fight down in gold. They get a second to Blaze. Zala finds another one to execute. Thank you for the shutdown earlier, Contracts. And now it's going to be the objective as well. Disaster for CLG after not killing Licorice in that play, Freak. This is all because they couldn't take down the Scion. There is a 500 gold objective bounty on this Rift Herald. You are no longer in a state of dominance for CLG. What a comeback afforded to the Golden Guardians. Oh my goodness. Scion's alive, so Licorice gets to come back with his teleport full health and go front to back team fighting. Now you see the later stages. The re-engage here, Renata ultimate is actually zoning CLG while Contracts goes in. So he gets basically soloed by most of the team. Good kick from Pride Stalker immediately on him. Uh, knocked him into the wall and they got to focus fire him down while the rest of the team was kind of zoned and split by the Ren uh, Renata ultimate. And then the re-engage there from Golden Gardens after they get, they get the first kill, they get objective bounty. Yep. They're right back into this. They're onto the dragon. Bounties have dropped. So dragon, a regular one here. Red buff not going to be fully stolen. Afraid of getting jumped upon. So out they go. Good job. Okay. Uh, CLG. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Their second dragon. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. I know I saw Luger in the last fight. 
Uh, didn't get any damage off of enemy champions. Uh, got berserked onto his teammate. Otherwise, uh, hit Harold a few times, but <laughs> he couldn't reach. And Literally then, did more friendly fire than enemy damage. Yeah, yeah, right? You show the damage graph, and he's on the other side. It's 6v4. Um, <laughs> it's actually a big brain freak. You yeah. turn your opponent's best player against them. <laughs> pretty good. Pretty good. On to uh, the standard sort of build of getting Nash. This gives you pretty much all of your evolves right now. Um, it's a Yeah, around the level you get the E evolve, you do need levels, not just Nash's plus Berserker yeah. Grief. You actually need a couple levels. I think this is about the point, though, where you get your E evolve. Obviously, Nash's has 100 AP. So you have all three evolves now. On to Luger. Um, has the invisibility and whatnot, but it speaks to the fact that this team needs to be able to dive, right? Because Luger has short range and cannot push through a Scion by himself with a build like this. So if he's not ulting backline, the fight looks bad for CLG. Yeah, so CLG need to refocus on this game, on their win cons, try and split up these Golden Guardians members. One of the biggest things is pushing those side lanes when you have the split pushers available to you and the long range to pick off people as they're trying to deal with the waves that you're pushing out. So immediately, Jenkins up to this top side, pushing in. Ari's already at the turret. So those minions on bottom side are dying, and CLG forced the trade. Stun's gonna land. I believe the Q hit as well for contracts. Will they go the rest of the way in? As Jenkins TPs up, Palafox now on the way over. Ultimately gets nothing for the, the spells on cooldown. Three waves, though, for CLG have crashed into this bottom turret and are just dying that Golden Guardians are losing. Here's a re-engage, though. Cyan ultimate forces Ari ultimate. Yeah, doesn't go for the charm afterwards to get a bigger trade. Just holds on to that one, and it's going to be ult for ult. Fine. Of course, pretty short one. Most of the RE builds are CDR heavy. Uh, probably Merc Shreds in this game because of the Syndra, but um, maybe onto some more haste afterwards. All right, so you gain a couple of waves oh. pushed in on a bottom side and uh, a decent little bit of an advantage there, but invested a teleport from your Camille. So that's definitely a very valuable resource later on because if... Uh, we look at Jenkins here. He's well on his way to his uh, death stance, almost to the completion here. See if uh, if this ends up being a death sentence for a Blaze Olive or Lost. Neither Golden Guardians carry has their flash right now. Mm -hmm. So while they do have a good front line, it's it's very easy for CLG to dive. That's what this team is built around. You know, they're not going through the Scion. Ideally, CLG are going over the Scion or around the Scion yeah. uh, to, to take down those carries and win the fight that way. While they have given up these bounties, Freak, and are focusing a lot on it, um, still should be to their advantage. You know, they can split the map, and with this extra gold plus this dragon approaching in two minutes, it's up to CLG to set up uh, the fight around, you know, where Golden Guardians are kind of walking out into that exposed territory. Yeah, it's interesting to see. I'm um, like kind of piecing together, like, what does the fight look like? Who does what things? Because Ole is very defensively built. And I think it's the right build on, on uh, Renata Glask in almost For all sure. games. Exhaust, Guardian, and running a locket. They can't burst you easily. They can't burst your teammates easily. If they do, you revive them, and you've probably done enough damage that they get the trade kill afterwards. Because, hey, Ari is going for a squishier build, right? She's, okay, Shadowfly myself on it, right? But, like, it's not the Zonia, it's not the Banshees. Like, we've seen those, like, very defensively skewed builds. Um, and, obviously, Kai'Sa herself, like, very squishy as well. So you can find these these correct targets. Rek'Sai, again, also full lethality. So if they can trade one back, the, the dive means nothing. It's an interesting point because <laughs> if. if, yeah, and, and, and of course, if you're trading one back, sometimes an even one for one trade, as we were kind of alluding to earlier, can still be an advantage, you know, depending on the champions yeah. that you're trading one for one. So. I just mean in the case of Renata, it's a zero for one because you air quote killed Zeri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, yeah, you get, if you get your bailout, then, yeah, yeah, exactly. then you're good if, to go. Yeah, you know, still saying if, but it's like, it's fun to think about like, you know, actually the way it's going to line up, like I do like CLG's comp a lot. It's very explosive. They're building very aggressively. It's really cool. Except that Ole can actually crush your entire comp if he plays it really, really well. Yeah, if his timing is good, his positioning is good, that he's there and he can get the bailout on the correct target and that they can get that takedown on the counter yeah. kill. We are on full AP, by the way. We've got Luger going towards the uh, Ludens after all. So it is very poke heavy. Poke tends to be good into non-healing enchanters because they can't start the fight. They can't recover you afterwards, right? Her, sh her shields are pretty mediocre, to be honest. So uh, definitely looking forward to the, the big... Void Seekers. All right, this is what we were waiting for. The Dragon approaches. So can CLG push in enough to force Golden Guardians to expose their flanks, their backsides here? A Blaze Olive has gotten his flash back up for the Syndra, but Lost still not uh, having his means he's much more vulnerable here on the Zeri. The fight for the wards. It's Golden Guardians who gets most of the vision, although CLG owns the river right now. They're going to walk forward. Cyan is the battering ram. Leeson supporting from behind. and. 
You find a little bit of poke damage. Now, watch if the Void Seekers land. If it lands, it's a three second cooldown. If it misses, it's like 12. Still has Void Seekers to cast. Still has spam to go. As long as these keep hitting, CLG can play it very, very slowly. Hits number three. And poke is what they want. CLG, time is in their favor. Golden Guardians uh, are the ones that have to make the move here, make the commitment. The poke just keep on, uh, keep on throwing it out uh, so that there's, I mean, there's, there's very little opportunity cost for him here. Even if you miss, just back off, wait for the cooldown to come back up, and he's trying to start the chain over again. Yeah, it just means that Golden Guardians can feel more comfortable going in, and indeed, though they walk up, it's Palafox showing up and just zoning everybody out. So Dragon number three to CLG. Mid lane, certainly attack, tower goes down. And now they can, even though Golden Guardians make the power move towards mid lane to try and trade, they get one wave into the tower, CLG can just go right back to the split push. Good call here. They send Camille straight back down to bottom side to continue on the split push. They don't want to adhere to the Golden Guardians five on five straight up through this Scion. Continue to play the map. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Prussian. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good damage. A nice Big stop kick. watch, but will it Got matter? It. Yeah, flash the wall. Closer to the wall to flash instantly. Otherwise, if you had to walk at all, you would be dying to the Rek'Sai. Again, though, that flash, these rotating carry flashes of Golden Guardians are so critical for them. That means the difference between CLG saying, hey, all right, fine. You can push up mid lane. We'll, we'll just trade you, push out bottom lane. Or they say, all right, we're actually going to go for the flank. But boom, kicked over the wall and can't find any more damage. So just barely lives. Thank you, Locket. Thank you, Steel Caps. Yeah, I don't know if Bright Cycle was going to go for like a, a kick flash play, if he was even thinking, hey, I'll invest my flash, or, or if it was just an attempt at the execution there. Either way, that's another time um, where he hasn't gotten a Lee Sin kick play off. I know right. there was a, the previous one where he talked about, oh, you know, he thought he has, his cooldown on flash was very, very short uh, to, and close to coming up, but it wasn't quite there. But this one, not going to find the kill. Puma happy to sail to safety. Fair enough. And I know if he, if he didn't go quite as far, you kick him short of the wall, and then maybe Puma has to flash to live, and it's like, oh, I kicked the yeah. flash. Yeah, cool. See you in the team fight when you can't make as big of plays. But Pretty yeah, close. ultimately, it is safety. The anchor got him far enough away that he is fine. And now, looking at mid, tries for a loss. If he juked, you know, just the wrong way, could have landed. Luger tries here as well. We've already seen him take a good 1v1 earlier. I think he still can. He, even on, I think, this spike, I think he wins the 1v1 against Zarya in most cases. Yeah. All right. Plus, a flashless Syndra is a lot easier to hit with those Void Seekers, so... Luger going to have a pretty happy time. His Ludens is almost done. And that really is going to leave a mark on a Syndra if you land even one of those. Even if you don't even count, you know, cooldown reduction and all that and trying to dodge the consecutive ones. The big thing about um, Kaisa Poke overall is keep in mind the damage ramps up on the W. So her W applies three stacks for passive, which is great. But the passive is more stack, more damage, more stacks it has. Mm -hmm. And when you add the fifth stack, it does missing health damage, percent missing health, which means like the first one does 20%. The second one, does the next 30%, and you're suddenly chunked very, very low. I've seen Luden's builds, two-shot squishies who don't have MR. I sh I saw almost a one-shot yesterday, <laughs> okay? So <laughs> I, I'm there. I'm fully yeah. there. This is this is definitely uh, the way to go for the Kaisa builds. By the way, a lot of it gained a lot of popularity. In LCK, they've been doing a lot mid. Faker played at mid. Aiming yeah. played at mid. They, they weren't, you know, as, you know, it wasn't like crushing the, the game or whatever, especially the aiming one. <laughs> but yeah. regardless, it's been very, very popular over there. And uh, we've kind of adopted it to uh, some of the AD carry style too, which uh, was also the the flex use of it yeah. previously. Yeah, it's been fun. I've, I've put probably a couple dozen games in AP Kaisa, and it's, it's it real, really feels fun. I do want to actually uh, shill for fourth item of Horizon Focus Champion, because mm -hmm. getting that extra 15 ability haste, does a lot for letting your second W hit before your uh, passive no. stacks fall off. Because uh, the ability ace is really tight in that build. Uh, no. Yeah, I know. Uh, no. Are they going to go for it? There's no flash on him, and they know. Ari wants <laughs> in. Got to find the Everfrost. Great timing on the stopwatch, but is there enough? Price Locker here for the Ooh. kick. A bunch of burst. They'll try to knock down the Rex side, and it will be a trade. There's no way you live, right? There's no way you live. Minions even doing a little bit or here. a little bit. <laughs> I mean, Lost, okay. Yeah, Blaze all gonna get the kill credit. They're not gonna let Lost grab that for a bit more. A one for one. So honestly though, again, uh, some of these one for one scenarios, they do cause other people to collapse. So you have a slight rotation that got you a little bit more damage off this mid turret, let's say. So it's kind of the life of a Rek'Sai. You're very used to late game trading your life for the life of an opponent carry. That one was actually a pretty good response. Pride Stucker was almost able to peel a Blaze Olive long enough, but Contract spamming his R button. I know that feel barely got off, and they got the kill. Yeah. 
And he's on the way to a great item, right? He's got the stopwatch inventory, which is going to build the GA. So next time you do this, oh, well, I'll just immune your ulti, and now you won't kill me. Yeah. Next time around, okay, broke a stopwatch, but GA. So I trade a five-minute cooldown for your life every time, right? Every five minutes, sure. Quote, unquote, one for one me for that, bro. Now, if we bridge some of the bigger topics around Golden Guardians, I had been wondering already from the early stages where they started losing, is this actually a five-head play where Golden Guardians haven't been able to finish out games where they get the gold leads? What if uh, they actually start out at a deficit and then make a big comeback freak? They do have a team fight comp. Can't, can't throw away the big lead if you don't have the big lead to begin with. Yeah, which one feels worse, getting stomped <laughs> or throwing? I don't know, but right now, th they fought, they certainly fought pretty close, but they've never been in control this entire time. We're on oh. Dragon Soul Point. Stun combo on a Luger. Doesn't get stunned, though. Let's go with the Q a little bit too late. Doesn't find anything useful on that one. We've got the rest of the team coming around, though. 5-5 five five coming soon. Stun into Olay. Very easy to kill an Enchanter. Needs to burn the lock and burn the stopwatch for now. Into the back line, we get a kick over the wall. The Blast Plant, Jenkins is away. And now it's Olay stuck, left alone. Blast Plant, but they've got to find this one, and indeed they will. Bailout means nothing. One for OCLG and a Dragon Soul soon to follow. All right, Licorice can heal back up, but they're going to be one member down for the Dragon Soul fight. Golden Guardians, what can they do? They continue to get poked. The Void Seeker hits. Another one comes out. He's just hitting Licorice here, so you can withstand that for a bit, but it will still slowly wear him down. He's going to be between shield cooldowns. That's going to start popping the passive as well. And we know, I think two hits will actually kill a Pride Sucker or a Blaze Olive. And you can see, now down to a 1200 on Licorice. Like, it's not going to get any better. At what point do you fight this Ooh. one? Because Ole's not showing up. It's worse than last time. It's worse than last time. And Anchor's going to land. A stopwatch buys two seconds. But the refight's going to come in. They're going to land the skill shots. And Golden Guardian stuck around. Just donate more gold away. CLG, another one in the dirt there for Golden Guardians. Now they continue to use the dragon as bait. This is just a lure to continue to shoot out the Void Seekers. Luger getting hit another one. He's on a ward. Yeah, that's going to be another damage hit. And there's going to be a charm as well. Prize Sucker is going to lose his life. Ulti across the kick back. Gets away thanks to his own ultimate. <laughs> but it's just Golden Guardians looking more and more. Shoot another map. one. Shoot another. Oh, I, I was hoping he would it blind hits. into uh, into the Scion brush. But Luger. He could ult Ole if it's up. It's down. But like, if he has ult, Ole's just dead there. Yeah, but he doesn't. So. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Let's live in reality. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, CLG live in a reality where they are making the push to playoffs. Looking to make it four wins in their last six games. And a dub here is one game behind evil geniuses for a playoff spot. The faithful so far are being rewarded for a late split surge. CLG, CL. <laughs> yeah. There's nobody here to chant it, so I'll do it for you. They'll be the, here in two weeks for the playoffs. The comebacks, oh my God, I can't, I can't wait. wait. I actually can't wait. I guess wait. three weeks for playoffs, but you know what I mean. Yeah, close enough. Nobody's, I'm not gonna fail. I'm not counting. <laughs> CLG are counting though, they're counting up the dubs. One win already this weekend, this would be two, and we kind of refocus on how they did them. It has been with this similar style, these dive comps, focusing on bottom lane early to unlock Poom to Rome with contracts, Luger being such a massive and reliable carry for them. Level 16 on Kaisa now, and his job is continue to poke them down, soften them up at these objectives. The rest of COG are just playing bodyguards. They're waiting around while Luger gets to work. Of course, he did miss the second one, so it's going to be that 10 second cooldown requirement. Part of the reason I'm going to shield for Eyes and Focus. Once you can finally buy it, here comes the first stun. Licorice wants to start the fight off. It's going to be enough. Berserk comes across, but really only hits a tank. Doesn't mean a ton towards Boom here. And the re engage looks pretty damn good. Luger's in there. Doesn't quite kill. No, the burn makes it happen. It's a two for them so far. A Blaze Olive not going to get shot again, but now three kills will come across. Somehow that one stinks with the minions. And it doesn't really matter. CLG have won this team fight completely. Nothing Golden Guardians can do as CLG march in for tier two towers in mid. Yeah, they're not going to stop there either. This inhibitor tower, this inhibitor should be toast. The Infernal Soul is in their hand. Oh, the and, I mean, Ole's got 15 seconds, so they can definitely push for Nexus. I don't know how your commitment on double turrets is, though. Let's see. Wave. Let's see how risky it gets. With a cannon. Big backflip there. Ablaze. All of us go back to the fountain as Cho'Gath chunks him heavily. And on they got and it. Yeah, on to turret over. number two. Turret's going to fall. CLG looking for a 2-0 weekend. One final one for one kill as we get the battle yet again. Stopwatch burned. They hit the Nexus. It's down low. No more stats to be padded. The only one that matters is the W. Add it to the roster, CLG. One game out of playoff. Counter Logic Gaming coming back big this weekend. 2-0. The dive paying off, Freak. Two wins, Super Week. 
0-2 last week, but 2-0 this one around. Golden Guardians sadly on a slide. That is now five losses in six games. We celebrate CLG. Turns out AP Kais is pretty good. Turns out CLG's bot lane is pretty good. And elect the coordination. Contracts back in form from at week three, the death leader of the league by far. In this one, a 4-0 start, crushing mid lane with the ganks. Yep. The wraparound gank on mid that we we're looking for punishes the Syndra. And they snowball really effectively, getting as much money as you can early into Luger as well. Seems to be a very, very valuable strategy. See how far they can go, Freak. Yep. Tied with Golden Guardians, five and eight. One above Immortals, three above TSM. They can toss FlyQuest sit at seven and five games to play. Both these teams, I will say, have their fate in their hands, right? You are one game behind teams that you, maybe you won't you won't specifically play, but mm. they're bound to drop a game at some point, right? So even in both these cases, the Golden Guardians are on a slide. They also have one game behind playoffs with five to play. Like both these teams can make the push at the very end, but CLG feel like they've got the momentum to do it. Well, they definitely do if we're looking at the recent wins. Yes. <laughs> um, it's it's going to be cool too, because a lot of these ones when they identify a specific strategy. I feel like those are the moments where CLG always makes these surges. If you remember back to the previous lineup when oh, they had Brock uh, on the lineup, yeah. And they're like, you know what? All in. And it was similar dive. It was with the Vi, the, you, as you say, quote unquote, bongo comp where there's all in diving onto people that also gave them a nice burst. And so we'll track if they can transition from, from these dive comps to other strategies and really make a, a complete playbook yeah. uh, and utilize that successfully because that's what you need in playoffs for the best of series. Absolutely. So we are heading over to the stage to join the Tigris and Contract for our Verizon post game interview. Thank you, Freak. A 2-0 week for CLG. All the momentum off of this victory. So right off the bat, how's it feel? 2-0. Pretty good, huh? Feels pretty good, especially since I got to pull out the Rek'Sai. It's been like a comfort jam of mine over the years. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it feels good. And that comfort did earn you player of the game. Did you pick this pick because of comfort coming into this, or were there other reasons compositionally? Yeah, I mean, historically, Rek'Sai is just good into Lee Sin, and you have a lot of uh, agency in playmaking early, so you can kind of dictate how, how you want to play and how you want to fight. So it's just uh, a good pick where you can play aggressive early and, you know, you get rewarded for it pretty, pretty well. well. Yeah, a lot of control over the game, yeah. that's for sure. I know in a recent interview with Travis Gafford, you talked about how you're very kind of momentum-based when it comes to mentality. Can you elaborate upon that a bit and where you are at right now, mentally speaking? Yeah, usually when I'm pretty confident, I'm playing pretty well and I feel like kind of like in a flow state kind of mindset. But um, yeah, I mean, confidence is everything. I think uh, the way you play, you know, how you prepare yourself in practice, you know, just everything translates, right? So, I mean, just feel good, play good. So that much of a difference maker going into practice for the rest of the week? Yep. All right. Well, contracts, great play from you today. Great play from CLG throughout the weekend. Thank you for the interview. Thank you. Appreciate it. That does it. CLG hanging out here in the crowd. We're going to hang out with the State Farm Analyst S one last time for the weekend. <laughs> oh, Raz. That'll never get old for me. What's up, everybody? And welcome back to the, <laughs> to the Analyst Desk. <laughs> following our final game of the day. Everything all right over there, Mark? Yeah. I was just checking good. CLG's record. It's looking a lot better. <laughs> looking was, damn good, good <laughs> right? <laughs> so just like it? that, I think this is where we got to start. Just like that, a team that felt in a number of ways, just by record, kind of doomed to miss the playoffs, moves to five and eight, is now in a tie for seventh place along with the team that they just took down in the Golden Guardians. Like, what a turnaround this has been, Mark. I, I'm surprised. I was uh, the initial CLG... Hyper, like hype fan, you know, like I was, I was trying right. to get everyone on board with them. I was like, Luger and Poom, they're gonna be pretty right. good. And then you quickly jumped off. I didn't. <laughs> they, gave <me laughs> just, they gave me just yeah. pause. It they, was like they shoved you off. Is it was that like what you're two saying? and six. Okay. They left me swimming out there, and I was like, give me something to be hyped about. But you know, they're delivering on the second round, Robin. So, so throw far. me the ring. Yeah. <laughs> like I want to be with you guys, but no, I think they're they're actually looking uh. a lot better. You can see why some people were excited about them heading into the year. Now, all that said, as they look better, Emily, I think mm -hmm. it's um it's important to note that they look better picking up champions like Rek'Sai for contracts. Like, that's an old staple of his as he's been around for quite some time, but a pick that not too many other people are lunging for at the moment. Yeah, I mean, we've seen it a little bit in other regions. I liked, so for example, this, 
we were talking about like, oh, uh, the way that Powell Fox has been able to get involved with contracts is making plays side lane when, when contracts is ganking, right? Well, here we see contracts coming mid, setting him ahead, and contracts had a really, really strong early game for CLG. Yeah, him and Poom. I thought they had great control of the bot side of the map. Um, you know, they had basically the enemy jungle little, littered with control wards. Uh, and there was a time in which Golden Guardian's bot lane could not actually comfortably crash wave without, uh, you know, Prize Stalker in the area. And that's just been because of how strong that control has been for uh, CLG. And a small follow-up on that is I think it's cool that CLG have been one of the teams that has picked the Kai'Sa response into Zeri. Uh, they, they obviously have, like, prepped it and want to play it into that matchup, and I think they've executed on it pretty well. I think the other thing that CLG's really cleaned up is the individual mistakes and getting too aggressive, like showing patience around their picks, showing patience around the, the late-game objectives, where they're just like, go to town, Luger, just keep Wing over and over and over <laughs> on this Kai'Sa. I think that they've shown a better understanding how to actually win with their comps, whereas before, like, everyone just felt like they were trying to make their own plays on their own. Especially around Drake fights. Yeah. Like, there was a while where we were really really, really kind of hammering Clean. on Ooh. how uh, how awful their neutral objective setups were. Uh, and I'm not going to say they're like perfect now, but you can see a little bit more of that patience you were talking about. Uh, Raz, if we pull back in the conversation what the CLG coaches had uh, given to us in that little video package uh, before the series, how do, understanding we're not at the end of the split yet. Of course. How do you evaluate uh, the progress that CLG has made from the start to where they're at now here at the end of week six? If I were to go in for a report card, I'd just give it a straight up A, you know, maybe even an A plus because they're scaling quite well. And I think that the the amount of um, you're not calling them an A plus quality team in the grand. No, just about the as convers- their growth. Exactly. gets an A plus. The growth uh, because the, a lot of the games that they've been picking up, the one versus uh, Cloud Nine versus Evil Geniuses, right? Uh, the the week four wins that they had. This week is straight up a clean 2-0 uh, week for them. Um, and a lot of it has just been based around how. This game is an example how Contracts has played much better around Poom. The vision has been really solid. You can tell that the, the, the constant theory uh, crafting and conversations they've had internally is starting to pay off. So this is the type of stuff that you do get excited for when you watch this team. You're an easy grader. <laughs> Give it an A plus. Here's for, here's for, gro- for effort and growth. Wait, what are you yeah. giving it? I'm giving them... A B minus. You know why? What? You know why? Why? Because I believe there's more growth to be seen. <laughs> I expect be- better You're things grading out of that. for the future? Yeah. Okay. If you come into my class and you're giving me. Gotta keep it aspirational. If you're okay. giving me. Good. You know? A, a B level effort, I'm gonna challenge you to get an A. Okay. I think CLG can do it. I, I think like they that. can make playoffs. Inject them. Go ahead and make playoffs. Actually, and I dare you. That's an important Mess discussion. Mess around <laughs> and make playoffs. I would hate you as a professor. I just might. Yeah. Watch me. I just might. <laughs> okay. Uh, player of the games from today, uh, Summit in game number one. That one felt pretty obvious. Abadaga picking it up in that second game for 100 Thieves over FlyQuest. Danny, Neo, and then Contracts closes it out with a pog here in the fifth and final game. We'll flip on over to our all-time <laughs> leaderboard, or rather now all-time, our spring split leaderboard, I should say. Summit, of course, still leading the pack with two game separation now over the next, but quickly followed by the likes of Santorin and Danny in that four spot and a couple of threes. Uh, the list goes on. It's obviously not just these five players, uh, but Mark, where are your head? where's your head at? I mean, we were talking about Will this C9 versus TL game be important for MVP standing just in terms of community mm-hmm. perception? I don't see how it could not be after yeah. what Absolutely. Summit just did, as well as leading in pogs. Okay, well, I'm going to stop down right there then because we may as well go to our MasterCard Player of the Week. It goes to none other than Summit. In some ways, a one-man army. Again? Look at the stat line. An incredible performer for Cloud9. The sole reason I predicted them in their victory today. (laughs) And he picks up the top honors on the weekend, Emily. Yeah, he's been great. And uh, again, I pointed this out earlier after their game, but the things I really love from him were actually out of lane. Like, we already know that he's a phenomenal laner, right? But in this game, again, on the Trindomir, which is something that you really can showcase the limitations of due to his kit, I thought out, like outside of lane in team fights like this is actually where he shot. Yeah, exactly. The Trindomir game today, yesterday's game, the Ignite Flash uh, 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 Nar that he just dominated mm-hmm. lane with. So like, th- those are just two clear, strong performances that we saw from Summit that he's just now making a run for it in the pogs and now making a run for it in the player of the weeks. I think the other thing, funny thing was the damage share that he had was 37%. And I remember earlier in the day, we showed 
Berserkers. And Berserker being a late game team fight monster, he was at like 22%. It was like eighth in the league. Games don't get to late game. Well, and the thing is, somebody's just doing a shitload of damage. <laughs> like, like, yeah. A damage fair. share is a percentage. You could be doing great DPM, but if yeah. your top laner is also hulking out, you know, like your number gets pushed down a right, little bit. Right, combo too. When summons ending games before you make it to your fourth item, you're not going to get that damage out. Plus, he's just dealing that much more of his own to boot. Let's pull up our Samsung SSD Fast 5 for the week. See where some of our individual top performers land. And congrats, of course, to those of you who earned bonus points in the LCS Sleeper Fantasy app for having this week's top performers in your lineups. Yeah, I think the big the big one that stands out to me is Abadaga. Um, obviously, uh, he is Sub someone 10. that we've wanted. Yeah, we've wanted him to be a little bit more of a larger participant in a lot of what 100 Thieves have been doing. Uh, I think he's had kind of a, a lesser split than he would have hoped. And he was a monster in today's game. Yeah, and I'll uh, point out two members here, specifically Danny, of course, who ended up picking up the pog today. Just been able to now consistently perform these past two weeks. Another one is Huni. I know uh, after uh, the losses and being able to see the pro to pro with him and High is always a little bit, you know, it can suck <laughs> off <laughs> losses like that. But you always have to focus on the positives in the in uh, the day to day. And so far, the positives is that at least the laning phase has been getting better and better for these guys. And we're now getting to a point where they have very clear moments in which they can win games. And now we're looking on to next week for the dubs. I look at Fake God in that lane as well. Uh, he's someone who's been criticized a lot. He actually had a really good game today. Uh, and I think he deserves credit for that because so much of the time it's about Neo and, and River and Bio and stuff that uh, when he does have a good game, I, I definitely want to give it a shout out. I like that call out. Mm -hmm. And I also want to call up the standings here to take a look at how the league stands. We now have a definitive first place team in Cloud9, currently one game separated over Team Liquid. We follow that with 100 Thieves and Dignitas, as well as FlyQuest to round out that tie for fourth place. And then things start to get interesting with Evil Geniuses currently sitting in the sixth and final playoff spot. You have CL and Golden Guardians hot on their heels. Yeah, we say CLG leapfrogging, but the other story here is kind of Dignitas. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. I feel like most people were kind of really out on them. Ready to jump. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, especially after their loss to FlyQuest. So, to have like a rebound this past week is really good for them. Well, we look ahead to our schedule for next week to see what lies in front of our teams. Only five games separate each of these teams from the end of the regular split, and they'll play two of them next week, starting on Saturday with Immortals Progressive versus 100 Thieves. We follow that with Team Liquid versus CLG. That would be an upset for the ages, as would be the next one if somehow TSM <laughs> can take down <laughs> Cloud9. Evil Geniuses, Dignitas, Quantum, Mirrored and winning losses. That. And we close things out with Golden Guardians <laughs> versus uh, FlyQuest. So we know which one Raz is hyped for. <laughs> <laughs> that 11 and 2 versus 2 11. I love it. I, I can be excited very easily, and that one I'm excited for. <laughs> so. if, you, if you add their records together, they're 500, and it makes it a close matchup. Boom. Amazing. Thank That's you perfect. for that. That's the hard hitting analysis you can expect here on the LCS. <laughs> Make sure you turn in a half hour early for the waiting room to get little bits of knowledge just like that. Now, I want to take a moment to invite all of you to join myself and Latigris, as well as Revenge and Destiny in the Bud Light League Lounge right after this show concludes. You can catch that on twitch.tv slash Bud Light after the highlights or... You can wait for the raid on this channel and you'll get ported on over. But for now, that's going to do it for us here on the LCS Analyst Desk. So on behalf of myself, the casters, and the entire remote broadcast crew, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next this week the... for Saturday's LCS. You got this, Emily. Be yeah, good to yeah, each other. A light one. Good night. That, that was a terrible she throw. She threw the though. pen. They've she told did. you you're going to have to pay for that. Cloud Nine's already got one, but it's going to be traded back. Support for support. Add another one to the pile as Whippo falls over. Two for one, three for one, Cloud Nine, four for one, Cloud Nine. They're knocking it over. They're going for the win. Santorin comes in trying to stop him. Summit, he still has the endless rage. And C9 takes out Team Liquid. Everybody's lo losing their bets today. Yeah, I'm Morgan not really Zat sure both lost their bet. what Raz is doing. But that's, you know what? That's okay. You got to keep it spicy. Brand. Yeah, you got to <laughs> keep it spicy on the desk, and then you're going to eat the spicy later. It'll exactly. be fine. And there they go. They pull him right back in with the chains. And now Afro Moo's going to be your second kill over to someday. 100 Thieves just won the game. I stole you. Yeah. I brought you over here. I ran away from the predictions. I want to just talk about the games. I don't want to predict them. That's 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 too much work. Multiple stuns onto Ichi's side as well, and the shadows come in once more. Vulcan flashing forward to get the hook. Huni is over the wall. Blast cone for some additional distance, but Spika rounded out by EG. 
EG right here in the bush. Oh no, Spiga steps up into it and the entire team was waiting to take him down. Destiny finding a double knock and here comes a fight. Ulti is on everybody and Immortals needs this desperately. If Felios gets one, Blue on the way oh, out. Actually oh, so close. blows him up and there's just no play to be had. There's not enough damage, there's not enough gold. Oh, You've got to be fuck. kidding me. <laughs> Player of the game, the dead inhibitors. Wait, the macro no is minion. enough. One, one minion! One hit is needed! Those blue minions are trolling! I don't think a way out. There's, there's, there can't be a way out, right? I mean, at this point, you shove in the wave. <laughs> a blaze, a blaze all of cannot live. Ah, I love it! Spice the minion, baby! Yeah, I love it, Love too. it, yes. On to it's turret over. number two. Turret's gonna fall! CLG looking for a 2-0 weekend. One final one-for-one one kill as we get the battle yet again. Stopwatch burned. They hit the Nexus. It's down low. No more stats to be padded. The only one that matters is the W!